Hello and welcome to lecture 9 of the course Microelectronics Lab. In this module, we are going to give you a brief overview of RF characterization equipment. Broadly, we will be covering uh, a quick introduction to ve vector network analyzer, which is the backbone of most of the RF measurements. We will talk about internal components of uh, a vector network analyzer or VNA. We'll talk about capabilities of these commercial VNAs and what all they can do, what kind of measurements one can perform. Then we'll switch to S-parameter measurements with the, the VNA. Uh, furthermore, a specific type of measurements with the VNA and uh, uh, examples like noise figure measurements. Um, and finally, we'll talk about automatic fixture removal and de-embedding and calibrations, which are very important for these RF measurements. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Adesh Kumar Jain. I work as a solutions engineer in Keyset Technologies. Uh, I mainly support uh, RF and microwave instruments and uh, semiconductor parametric analyzers. Uh, so why are we today here is uh, we will be going through an introduction to the PNA X series of uh, network analyzers. We will start with some fundamentals of network analyzers and go through what are all the measurements that is possible with network analyzers. Let's start with what is a network analyzer. Network analyzer is a general purpose instrument which is used for characterizing RF devices. Okay, so now what do we mean by characterization? Characterization might be as simple as starting with return loss or gain measurements, that is insertion loss uh, or um, insertion phase measurements or it can be as complex as measurements like noise figure or error vector magnitude, etc. Okay, going ahead. Uh, why do we need to test components? Because these test components are finally going into uh, bigger systems, correct? So these test components will decide what is the behavior of your complete system. So we need to understand how each building block is behaving. So vector network analyzers help us characterize those each of these building blocks. And also uh, when we talk about uh, performance, so we need to make sure that the performance is distortionless. So these distortions might be because of phase variations or it might be because of amplitude variations. Vector network analysis helps us understand both. Apart from this, we need to also understand what, how, the, how good is the matching of input and output of your devices. So vector network analysis helps us understand all of these character, characteristics of uh, RF hardware. When we talk about characterizing, it is not only about magnitude, phase is also important. Why phase is important? So it helps us completely characterize a hardware. What do we mean by completely characterizing? If we talk about impedance match, okay, it is not about only return loss. We need to understand both magnitude and phase. Then only we can get the value of what is the impedance. So when we have the understanding of both magnitude and phase, then we can get actual impedance value of your input or output ports. Apart from, there are, apart from that, there are a lot of other applications to understand phase. Another uh, important requirement is to understand what is the phase distortion that your hardware is introducing. So the parameter generally we measure for understanding the phase distortion is group delay or insertion phase. It is uh, different formats of the same uh, parameter. Uh, so there are some other examples also what I'm showing here. If I want to do time domain characterization, if I have to convert the uh, parameter, whatever I'm getting into time domain, so basically to understand how the impedance is varying over the distance or over the time, so then converting it to time domain is also important. So when we convert it, to convert it to time domain, we need both magnitude and phase. Let us now get into the actual architecture of a vector network analyzer. I'm showing you two different types of uh, network analyzer architecture. Uh, so what you see on the left side is the basic architecture, how uh, a vector network analyzer uh, started to be existing. Okay, then uh, uh, the right side, what you see is the modern day network analyzer, the actually the architecture of the hardware, what you are seeing in your screen, okay. Uh, this is actual hardware architecture. I will be uh, explaining a little bit in more detail when I come into that slide. So let us uh, basically understand what a network analyzer has. To characterize a behavior of the hardware, we need a stimulus and we need a system which can measure the response of this. So the measurement of the response has to happen both at the 
uh, output port and to measure at the input port also wherever I am giving the stimulus. Why do we need at the input port? To measure parameters like reflection parameters. Uh, it might, you might call it as return loss, you might call it as S11. So for all these parameters we need to give the res uh, stimulus also from the same port and uh, measure the response also from the same port. Um, then we need to measure what is getting transmitted. So if I can do this uh, uh, response measurement both on the input port and the output port and give a stimulus on either ports then we can do then we can characterize the behavior of the hardware completely. So what you see here there is a source okay there is a source uh, modern day network analyzers ha can have more than one source uh, there is receiver or detector uh, olden day network analyzers used to have a uh, detector now uh, modern day network analyzers have receivers okay. Then, uh, of course, uh, whatever the measurement is done, it has to be processed and displayed in an understandable manner. So I want it in return loss format, I want, it to, I want to see only the phase, I want to plot it as a Smith chart. All this processing will be done and it will be displayed. Uh, one of the important hardware part of the network analyzer is the signal separation device, what you see here. Uh, usually there is a coupler sitting inside it uh, on each port, uh, which helps us separate out the signal which is coming in either directions. Okay, I need to measure what is the signal that is going out of the vector network analyzer to know what is the stimulus and I need to measure what is the signal that is coming into the network analyzer port to understand what is the response. So for each port has two receivers, I will be going into the detail in the next slide. Each port has two receivers which is measuring the signal that is going outside the VNA and the signal that is coming into the VNA. So I need, I, I have both the stimulus and response. So then the processor will calculate what is the ratio, then display it in the right format. Now let us see, uh, the modern day network analysis, are they uh, as simple as what you saw there? Not really, it has a lot of other hardware built into that. Uh, so this shows actually a, a two port PNAX uh, with inbuilt specialized receivers, inbuilt pulse generators. Okay, let me go a little more in detail here. If you see here, there is two ports, port one, and port 2, okay. The, there are two sources built in, source 1 and source 2, okay. The source, when, when we start doing the measurement, the stimulus passes through the directional coupler and the signal is picked up by the receiver which is called as reference receivers. There is reference receiver 1 here, reference receiver 2 here, R1 is at the port 1, R2 is at the port 2, which is actually capturing the reference signal or the stimulus signal, whatever is going out of the vector network analyzer. Okay. And there are two other receivers which is called as measurement receivers, which is usually named as A, B, C, D, A at the port 1, D at the port 4, if we have 4 port, here we are showing you A and B which is the measurement receivers. So for example, if I am measuring S11 or return loss, so we need to measure what is happening at this receiver and this receiver and take a ratio of A by R1 which will give me reflected over incident signal. If I want to do insertion measurement uh, in the forward direction, then we need the measurement from B to R1 which will be B by R1. So uh, it holds, uh, uh, the same thing holds good in the reverse direction also. So each port has two receivers. So all the modern network analyzers have this architecture of having two receivers at each port and signal separation device like what you see here. Okay, these are the directional couplers. Okay, I will point out some of the important hardware, not everything in detail. Uh, you can see here uh, the yellow colored uh, hardware which is the attenuator sitting inside. Based on what configurations you have, uh, it can have, the vector network analyzers can have source attenuators and receiver attenuators. Source attenuators to control the power that is going into your hardware. So your hardware will be sensitive to input power. Some hardware, if you are talking about power amplifier, you need a minimum power level so that your amplifier can work as it is expected. Uh, for some hardware, I need to limit the highest power because I don't want to compress when I'm doing the measurement. Uh, so the source attenuator helps me to do that. Uh, there is a receiver attenuator, each receiver will have its own attenuator also. Uh, so these receiver attenuators helps in two ways. Uh, one is uh, it is actually protecting the receiver from, uh, 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 from getting damaged and also it is protecting the receiver from getting into compression so that I can do a correct measurement. Uh, I don't want the network analyzers uh, hardware or network analyzers receiver itself to go into compression when I am doing the measurement will, which will give me the fa false results. So there are receivers, receiver attenuators and source attenuators sitting inside. Okay. 
there are pulse modulators and pulse generator sitting inside. Uh, again, lot of hardware uh, works in only in pulsed condition. For example, if I'm talking about an amplifier that works in a radar, uh, that will have to work at a very high power and this high power is not continuously given to the amplifier. So it always works in a pulsed uh, condition. So if I want to do the param S parameter measurements in pulsed condition, so the network analyzers are capable of having internal pulse generators and pulse modulators. Uh, so PNAX also has internal pulse generators and pulse modulators. You need the right options uh, based on what options you purchase, you can enable or disable, enable that basically. Uh, one other important hardware what these PNAX kind of receivers, uh, uh, kind of network analyzers have is inbuilt low noise receivers. Okay, for noise figure measurements, there are dedicated receivers sitting inside uh, which can help you do uh, precise uh, noise figure measurements. I'll be talking a little bit about noise figure measurements at, uh, at a later slide. Uh, apart from that, PNX is very, very flexible hardware uh, because it has lot of internal switches, okay, where I can route my signals uh, in different paths. Uh, for example, a PNX can have an inbuilt combiner also to do measurements like intermodulation distortion. I can combine two signals from two sources or two tones from two sources and get that signal out from the same port, okay, that routing is possible. and. Um, I can add additional signal generator from, from the rear panel to do measurements like if I want to do uh, IMD measurement for a mixer, then I might require three or four sources. Then I can use a third source uh, which is coming, which is fed from the rear panel. Now PNX also can have an inbuilt third source also. Uh, I can add more sources from the rear panel. Uh, those are some of the advantages of having um, uh, internal switches uh, to uh, guide the signal in whatever manner or in whatever path I need. Also you can see uh, uh, electronic calibration kit uh, that is connected here. Uh, you need an eCal kit for calibration. Apart from that why we are using, a, why we have connected a calibration kit here is for uh, using it as a tuner for noise figure measurements. Okay. Uh, last thing what I want to highlight on the block diagram is can you see the loops here, okay. These are the loops what you are seeing here also. So these are the exact loops what is shown here which is coming outside. So these are called as configurable test set. This gives us direct access to the source and the uh, receivers inbuilt. Okay, this gives me direct access. So I can bypass the coupler internally, I can directly access the receiver. I can bypass the coupler, I can directly access, uh, access the source that is coming out. You want me to show it here again? Uh, okay, so uh, I was talking about the couplers here, uh, the loops here, whatever you are seeing here. These loops are nothing but the loops of what you are seeing on the hardware. Each port has these three loops, okay. These three loops are giving me access to the internal receivers and the source directly. I can bypass the couplers and access the source and receivers directly. Why do we require this? Uh, there are a lot of applications which require direct access. Uh, one of the application is when I want to generate higher power than what the network analyzer itself gives. I want to do a power amplifier measurement. So the network analyzer's receiver also has limitation of what highest power it can manage and the source also has a limitation of up to what power you can uh, generate. A network analyzer cannot have unlimited power source. So what I can do is I can bypass the internal couplers which are meant to work up to usually plus 27 dBm or plus 30 dBm uh, and I can use external uh, 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 external amplifiers, external high power couplers to do a setup where I can do high power amplifier measurements. One more application is uh, especially when you are doing measurements on uh, bare amplifiers, uh, if you want to uh, do measurements like load pull, uh, then again we need to access these uh, uh, receivers uh, and the source directly. For like what I am showing you here, a tuner, uh, similarly I can add a tuner uh, to uh, vary the impedance, vary the load impedance and see how the noise figure gain output power is varying uh, to do a load pull measurements. For such applications, these front loops uh, will be helpful. So that is what you are seeing here at uh, each ports. Now let us uh, come into the uh, 
next aspect of a vector network analyzer which is called as a calibration so whenever you are doing a measurement on a network analyzer it is not just connect turn on the network analyzer and start using it you want to know the actual behavior of the hardware you are measuring and not uh, the effects of the cables what you are using the probes what you are using or the network analyzer errors itself to remove all these errors before starting a measurement you need to you must do a calibration so uh, there are different types of calibration all the rf hardware all the electronic hardware has to go to a calibration lab usually once in a year uh, to get calibrated uh, so that it functions or it performs as per the specifications uh, the other import other type of calibration is the calibration that is required before the measurement that is what i'm talking about here this removes some uh, errors called as systematic errors what are these systematic errors these systematic errors are errors that can be calculated or measured and we can remove it from the final measurement that is what is systematic errors and how these errors are removed these errors are removed by a process called as calibration so what are these systematic errors uh, we call this as 12 error terms for a two port vector network analyzer what are these 12 error terms so what are the errors that we are trying to remove the first is called the mismatch errors what you see here which is source mismatch and load mismatch when you are using a network analyzer the test ports itself does not have uh, absolute 50 ohms throughout the uh, frequency range let us assume the vn has other than that you will have cables you will have probes which will have its own impedance characteristics so you want to correct whatever the mismatch errors are there so the correction that is done for the to remove the mismatch errors or the errors uh, because of the mismatch is called as source mismatch and load mismatch source mismatch is the mismatch at the uh, port where you are generating the stimulus condition and the load mismatch is at the port where you are actually measuring it the next two errors are called as uh, frequency response errors or tracking errors these are the errors because of the frequency response of the receivers there are two receivers at play for any measurement you are doing correct so if i'm doing s11 there is a and r1 if i'm doing s21 it is b and r1 so to remove those uh, so because of the variation in the frequency response between the two uh, uh, between the two receivers uh, there are errors that will be getting added into your measurements to those errors are called as reflection tracking and transmission tracking reflection tracking is because of the errors that are that is uh, there because of the frequency response of the two receivers on the same port transmission tracking are the errors that are there because of uh, the mismatches or the frequency response of the two receivers in the two different ports uh, the third type of error is called as uh, uh, leakage errors one is directivity the directivity is because of the leakage in the directional coupler sitting inside the vector network analyzer ideally i want the signal to be coupled only in one direction the coupled port should should couple the signal which is traveling in only in one direction but there is always a parameter called as leakage which uh, 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 directivity which actually causes a leakage signal so that that error is called as directivity error the other error uh, uh, the other leakage error is called as the crosstalk without actually physically connecting the two ports there would be some signal that is getting coupled from the source to the receiver that is called as crosstalk error this is usually very 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 less uh, but yes that is the sixth type of error so six errors in one direction the same six errors in the other direction these are the 12 errors so these are the errors you need to correct before you are doing the measurements if you are not correcting it your measurements is actually uh, does not make any sense because you are not measuring the performance of your hardware but you are measuring the performance of your hardware plus the whole system so you need to remove these errors how do you remove these errors these remove these errors are removed using calibration kits there are different types of calibrations that are done um, uh, the basic calibration or the most traditional calibration that is done is called as SOLT calibration which is short open load and through we know what is expected when i connect a short when i connect a open when i connect a load to a vector network analyzer port or rather the vector network analyzer knows what happens if i connect a short at port one when i connect a open to the port two so it tries to do that measurement and then it calculates the error parameters 
So I was talking about the most traditional calibration which is SOLT calibration which is short open load through. So these, this calibration type is usually used for uh, coaxial connectors. Uh, so when it goes away from coaxial connectors, say I'm doing a measurement on a trace, on a, uh, if I'm doing a measurement on, uh, 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 on a, a PCB, if I'm doing a measurement on uh, uh, waveguides, then uh, making an open short load is not so easy. Then there are other standards which are called as TRM, TRL, which stands for through reflect match, through reflect line. These are different standards used. Uh, now, uh, traditionally, these calibration kits used to have these hardware, separate hardwares, which is called as mechanical calibration kit, which used to have uh, open, short, load, uh, which is characterized, those parameters were known to the network analyzer that used to be get, uh, that used to get connected to each of the ports to do that calibration. Uh, now when you are doing that measurement on a, a probe station also, you will be using such cal, cal substrate, which has this open short load and through kind of uh, standards. Uh, if you are doing measurement directly on a vector network analyzer, uh, you can actually use this standard called as electronic calibration kit. How is it different? Uh, basically, it makes uh, the number of connections, it reduces the number of connections. So with one single connection, I can do a two port calibration without disconnecting and connecting. Let us consider a two port, full two port calibration. Uh, using a mechanical calibration kit, I need at least seven connections. Open short load on port one, open short load on port two, and do a through connection. So with eCal e kit, it's a single connection, we do a single connection, and there is a USB control uh, uh, that goes into the network analyzer. There are seven impedance states sitting in an uh, in a electronic calibration kits. Uh, the network analyzer automatically switches between all the states, and then it does a uh, error correction. It calculates the error parameters which will be corrected uh, finally from the measurements. With this, uh, I switch over to the actual network analyzer what you have, uh, starting with what key site or war, uh, uh, what key site offers uh, as a portfolio of network analyzers to the industry. Okay. Uh, Keysight has variety of network analyzers, okay? Uh, basically, uh, it is targeted to different applications. Uh, for example, if a, if, if a user wants to carry his network analyzer onto a field and do a measurement, we have uh, an instrument called as Field Fox. We have an instrument called as Field Fox, which is a handheld battery operated instrument. Uh, which can go up to 54 gigahertz, okay? Uh, then if a customer wants, if a user wants to do measurement uh, for in, in, a, in a situation where it is more than four ports, we need more than four ports. For example, uh, users who are working on uh, high-speed digital standards like PCI, okay? The backplanes will have multiple connectors and with four port network analyzer doing these measurements takes a lot of time. So this PXI based network analyzer, again this can go up to 53 gigahertz, can have multi-port. Uh, in a similar uh, size, actually in fact a little lesser than this, uh, we can have up to 50 ports of uh, vector network analyzers, okay? Uh, there are USB, now we have recently introduced streamline based, uh, streamline series of network analyzer, uh, which is a hardware, very small hardware. You can have two, four, six ports of uh, network analyzer. You need, just need a PC uh, with a USB connection. It gets connected, install the software and start using it as a network analyzer. Okay, then coming to this uh, high performance series network analyzer, we have two, uh, uh, Types here also, we have ENA series network analyzers and we have PNA series network analyzers. ENA series network analyzers also now go up to 53 gigahertz and PNA series goes up to 67 gigahertz. Apart from that, there are a lot of applications that gets added around the network analyzer. I will be talking about few of them in the upcoming slides. Um, okay, is it only up to 67 gigahertz? Not really, now uh, with adding uh, some hardware to the same analyzer, okay, for the PNX, adding two hardware, basically a controller and frequency extenders, you can extend the frequency range up to 120 gigahertz. Like now, how this analyzer is from 10 megahertz to 67 gigahertz, you can do measurements from 500 hertz to 125 gigahertz continuously. 
the good part is the network analyzers are upgradable also. Today you have a 67 gigahertz network analyzer, you can add on to the hardware to make it 125 gigahertz network analyzer. Um, uh, again, is 125 gigahertz is a limit? Uh, not really. Uh, with banded hardware, uh, with our partner's hardware, you can extend it this up to 1.5 terahertz also. Okay, there are companies like Virginia Diodes uh, with, who, with uh, whom we partner to extend the frequency range up to 1.5 terahertz also. It's a calibrated system up to 1.5 terahertz. Is VNA only for uh, S parameter measurements? Uh, as I started my presentation, it's not only for S parameter measurements, it's for complete characterization of a RF hardware. Okay, so a lot of applications can be added on to these vector network analyzer, especially you have the highest performance network analyzer, the PNAX. PNAX can have lot of other measurements built into this. I will not be going into all the details, uh, I will be talking about some of the important measurements that make sense to this lab. Um, and I'll be going into s details also, like amplifier tests. We can do lot of measurements on for amplifiers. So it can be as simple as S parameters, return loss, insertion loss, uh, VSWR, group delay kind of measurements. Uh, it can be as complex as to do uh, gain compression measurements, IMD measurements, uh, uh, active hot S parameter measurements noise figure measurements, all these measurements also can be done. So going ahead, uh, it's not only about CW measurements, you can also do pulsed RF measurements. Um, uh, pulsed RF and DC measurements can be done, all these S parameters can be measured in pulsed condition also. Signal integrity test, what is signal integrity test? Signal integrity test is again application where uh, the boom of high speed digital is there, where it is no more a digital signal. So we are talking about uh, uh, data rate in gigahertz now, GBPS of data rate. So when it comes to GBPS of data rate, the, uh, the, the frequency components present in that are going into 50s, 50 gigahertz and more. Okay, so then you need to do RF measurements. You need to do, you need to understand what is the integrity of the signal from the input to the output of your trays, board, transmitter, receiver. So you need to understand how the uh, impedance is changing over the length of your trays. Uh, is there any crosstalk between the traces of these uh, uh, high speed digital standards? So all those measurements also can be done using a network analyzer, uh, which is signal integrity measurement. Uh, load pool measurements when you need to understand uh, at what impedances your noise figure, your gain, your uh, power output is the best to tune into the best uh, impedances. So source pool, load pool kind of measurements can be done. Noise parameters can be done. So to understand noise figure, at, uh, to understand the noise performance at different impedances. Uh, Going above that, there is also something called as nonlinear vector network analysis. Uh, you want to understand how the amplifier is behaving uh, at, in its nonlinear condition. So S parameter is always in linear condition, right? We don't know what happens in the nonlinear condition. So the non NVNA helps us to understand the behavior of net, behavior of network analysis, uh, behavior of your devices at nonlinear condition. So say for example, if I'm giving a, a power input at a higher power and want to see what is happening at its fundamental at the output and what is happening at the harmonics. So we need to understand this to uh, tune the amplifier or tune your system to its best performance. So you can do the complete analysis and you can also extract a uh, nonlinear parameter model which is called as X parameters. So a combination of uh, key sites ADS and a network analyzer can give you X parameter model uh, which will have not only the frequency and uh, 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 frequency and uh, not only about the frequency, it will also have the variables of power, variable of DC. You can see at different power levels what is happening. You want to see at different DC condition what is happening, at different impedances what is happening. So one single model can give you the behavior of a net, uh, behavior of a RF network uh, in linear and nonlinear condition. So X parameter is a superset of S parameter. So like this, there are a lot of applications. So we, till now we only spoke about amplifiers where input and output frequencies are same, right? So you can do measurements at up converters, down converters, receivers also where input and output frequencies are different. Uh, so that is what we are showing here as mixer test. 
So all these measurements are possible in these net network analyzers. Okay, once we can do, we are, once we have inbuilt source and receivers and the right software supporting it, so all these measurements are a possibility. Okay, all these comes with different options. So it depends upon your application, what kind of network analyzers uh, you will have. Uh, the good part is these applications can be upgraded in your network analyzer also. So this is a list of some of the measurements. Again, this is only a smaller list. Lot of other measurements can be done. Uh, I have only uh, uh, picked up few of them to uh, show or to give more meaning for the kind of hardware what you have. Um, one more important thing is, I told you that there, is, there are a lot of internal switches inside which helps us to route the signal in the right uh, path. What is the usage, what is the use of this? Say for example, I have an amplifier connected. I want to do the linear S parameter measurement. I want to do the noise figure measurement. I want to do IMD measurements. Um, I want to do pulsed S parameter measurement. So all these require different hardwares internally. So for example, if I'm talking about S parameter, the normal path would do. When I want to do the noise figure measurement, I might want to use the specialized noise receivers. When I want to do pulsed S parameter measurement, I want the pulse uh, modulators and pulse uh, pulse sources to come into picture. When I want to do IMD measurement, uh, I want a combiner that has to come into picture. So everything can be configured once for all using different channels in a PNAX and we can do the measurement in a single connection. What do I mean by single connection? You will be connecting the hardware only once. Okay, and you can do all these measurements because it has this configurability internally. Okay, that is why we call it a single connection multiple measurement. Think I have a slide set? Yeah. Uh, this slide shows you all these measurements what I am discussing. So this is doing a normal S parameter. This is showing your IMD measurement. This is showing uh, a compression, gain compression measurement. Uh, then there is pulse S parameter. This is showing me noise figure measurement. So all these measurement in one single connection. So we can do a calibration for the whole setup. Internally it calibrates all the parts in the way it is required. So we can do all the calibration, all the setup and do a measurement with a single connection. That is the capability of PNX. Right now the PNX what I am seeing here has the S parameter measurement capability. But yes, these all measurements can be uh, built onto that which is really helpful for uh, amplifier testing. So uh, the screen what you are seeing now is the S parameter measurement. You are seeing all the four S parameter. Actually, if you are able to see, we are seeing S11, S21, S12, and S22 uh, with different color, uh, different colors for each traces. And there are markers put on each trace, all the four traces. And the marker data is here. It's showing a data at five gigahertz. Uh, what is S11, S21, S12, S22? And this is showing you the magnitude part. Uh, I can very you uh, very simply use a one button press and I can change it to phase or I can change it to Smith chart or I, I can see it in VSWR format. So all those formats can be very sim very easily changed uh, with a click of a button only. Okay, this is a normal S parameter. Actually, that is what you are seeing on the screen also. Now it is showing me S11 uh, on the instrument. So now what you are seeing on the vector network analyzer screen is also a normal S parameter class. Okay. By default, when you turn on, you will be seeing S11 measurement. Okay, when I press this button called S measure, I can see what are all the S parameter that I can do. I can do S11, S21, S12, S22. It is a two port network analyzer. I can easily switch on to any of the measurement. This is showing me S21 measurement. If I want to see the insertion loss or I want to see insertion phase, I want to see it in group delay format, I want to see Smith chart. If I press the format button, I get different formats. So I want to see the phase. Then when I press phase, it will give me the S21 phase or insertion phase, whatever you want to call. Uh, insertion phase does not make much sense for a, a for a device like an amplifier. I want to do a group delay test. Then I press delay button. Then I see group delay versus frequency. Uh, so it is as simple as it. Just press few buttons. You can see whatever measurements once you have calibrated the whole setup. Okay. I am seeing only one trace as of now. I can increase the number of traces also like how, how I was showing on this previous screen I can see multiple traces okay apart from s parameter measurements we can do lot of other measurements as I've been uh, mentioning in uh, the previous slides so I will see some of the screenshots that I have taken for uh, some of these measurements so the first one what I'm showing you is gain compression so as uh, the power input 
uh, increases for your amplifier, the amplifier goes into compression. The gain does not be uh, does not uh, stay linear; it starts compressing. So that is what I want to understand. So what the screenshot is showing is I am sweeping the power from minus 30 dBm to plus 3 dBm at a frequency of 5 gigahertz. So the power level. So th this this is showing input power and output power, and this is showing me the gain. So the gain stays constant till a particular input power level, then it starts reducing. Okay, then it starts reducing. So again, with few button press on the network analyzer, I can use markers to find out one dB compression point. Okay, I can keep the frequency constant instead of sweeping the frequency. I will be sweeping power, keeping the frequency constant, and just press one button and it will search where one dB compression is, and it will point out and it will list whatever is the compression P in compression P out and what is the compression level. So you can see it see one dB compression. You can see how many ever dB compression. Sometimes 0.1 dB compression point is also measured. So you can do 0.1 dB compression measurements also can be done. So that is gain compression. Again, gain compression, this is being done in a single frequency. You can very well do with your existing network analyzer. You can also do uh, measurements where I want to sweep frequency. Over the frequency point, I want to see the compression P in or compression P out. Okay, this is uh, swept gain compression. We call it as gain compression application. So this is showing you frequency versus uh, the compression P out and the S21 data. So both the traces are shown. So I can see, I can say the network and I say, okay, I want to do this measurement from frequency F1 to F2. And at each frequency, you have to sweep from power P1 to P2 and find out where compression is and plot the compression P in or compression P out over the frequency range. So it can do this in one calibration, it can plot. So over the frequency range, you can see the compression point of your amplifier of any of your device. So that is what is being shown. Apart from this, compression, gain compression application also helps you understand at compression what is your output match because your output match changes when it is going into compression. So you can see how the match is also changing at your compression level when you are doing this measurement. So that is called as gain compression application. IMD measurement, uh, PNX can have an inbuilt combiner. Uh, and it has inbuilt two sources. So what is IMD? I need to give two tones, F1 and F2, and see what is happening at uh, N times F1 plus or minus M times F2, which is the intermodulation distortion components, right? So the most uh, significant IMD is the third order products, which is two F1 minus F2 and two F2 minus F1. So if I'm giving two input tones, I want to see what is happening at the IMD. Uh, the third order intermodulation uh, frequencies. So I want to understand what is the power difference between this. Higher this intermodulation components, which means more the distortion is with the amplifier. So PNX with the right application can do this IMD measurement also. Now this IMD measurement, whatever I'm showing you on the screen is at one set of frequencies at one, at one set of power. Like GCA I explained, this also can be swept over frequency where, where I can sweep this F1 and F2 from a particular center frequency to a second center frequency. I can sweep the F1 to F2 or I can sweep the delta F, the difference between the two tones or I can sweep the power level and I can plot that over the frequency, over the power, what is the IMD, uh, uh, what is the IMD uh, uh, level that I am measuring. So again, these are all uh, the important uh, specifications or important performance characteristics of an amplifier. Noise figure, uh, again, one of the very important uh, uh, parameter for understanding the performance of amplifier. So uh, if I start a noise, what, what is noise figure? Noise figure is telling how much noise is getting added to, added, added by the network, uh, added by the amplifier itself. So which is nothing but SNR input over SNR output, which gives you the noise factor. A logarithmic format is called as noise figure. So we need to measure this noise added by the amplifier which gives me the noise figure data. Noise figure is usually measured uh, using a noise figure analyzer or traditionally measured using a noise figure analyzer or a spectrum analyzer, uh, which uses a technique called as Y factor technique, where there is a noise source that is used. Okay, there are two levels of noise input that is given. We measure what is the noise output at the two input levels and using these 
combination of the power levels, uh, we calculate what is the noise added to calculate the noise figure. When we use that technique, there are some uncertainties that is always there in the system, which is accepted by the industry also. I'm not telling that is a wrong method, but that method is there. There are some assumptions that are there that is accepted by the industry, like uh, the, the mismatch or, or the match when I connect the noise source to the spectrum analyzer directly or the noise figure analyzer directly, and when I connect it to the amplifier remains the same. The match uh, when the noise source is in off condition and on condition is the same. And the hardware that is in between the noise source and your device under test, for example, when you are doing a on wafer measurement. So there is a mismatch that is getting added between these. These are not taken into consideration or these are ignored when we are doing a noise figure measurement when we uh, do uh, noise figure using Y factor technique. The vector network analyzers uses something called as cold source technique. What is done here is instead of using two input power levels, what we do is we measure gain, which is the slope of the line what we want, and we measure what is the noise output when the input is terminated with a proper 50 ohm match. Okay, vector network analyzer is a very good instrument to measure gain, and we can terminate because since we know the calibration, we have calibrated the whole system, we know what is the match that is offered to the uh, amplifier or your device under test. From these two parameters, we can calculate this noise figure, which is called as cold source technique. So the VNA can do noise figure measurement using cold source technique, and this reduces the uncertainties or the assumptions around the system to a great extent when we compare to Y-factor technique. So uh, apart from that, PNAX, especially PNAX is the only network analyzer which has a specialized no low noise receiver sitting inside for noise figure measurement. So the, the normal noise, the normal receivers which are used for S parameter measurements have a higher noise figure of itself. But internally these low noise uh, receivers have multiple amplifier stages and filter stages to get the best noise figure measurement that is possible. Um, apart from this new technique of doing only uh, doing uh, using the cold source technique, uh, an additional step also can be done, which is called as vector calibrated noise figure measurement. If you remember in the first slide, I showed you that uh, uh, ECAL kit is connected as a tuner, correct? What is that doing? When we do when we do a noise figure measurement, again we terminate it with 50 ohms and see what is the noise output. Okay that is actually the cold noise uh, when we terminate it and we measure the noise output from your device. When I say when I am terminating, it is not exactly 50 ohm. We are correcting it with error parameters. What if instead of correcting it or instead of assuming it is 50 ohm, we offer known impedances? So that is what the, the ECAL kit as a tuner does and that is what vector correction for noise figure does in a PNAX based noise figure measurement system. So uh, additional ECAL kit can be used, again it can be used, I can do a scalar correction also, I can do a vector correction also. A vector correction requires additional noise, uh, additional e-calibration, ECAL kit which will be always connected between these two ports for uh, varying the impedances and uh, getting the noise, uh, be getting a better noise figure measurement or a noise figure measurement with much lower uncertainty. Known impedances are offered at the input, noise power is measured and that value is finally converged to 50 ohm impedance that is uh, terminated at the input finally. So these applications till now whatever I spoken are there from some time. Uh, recently in PNX we have introduced lot of new features. I will give you a quick glance of these features. One is inbuilt spectrum analyzer. We know that we have four receivers in your network analyzer, a two port network analyzer. If I have a four port network analyzer, there are eight receivers. But these receivers are not spectrum analyzers by itself because there is no, uh, uh, there is no way of finding out uh, the, uh, what, is a, what is a receiver? A receiver has a down converter sitting inside, correct? So when we feed a signal and there is a LO, I have RF plus LO and RF minus LO. And only one of them is what is required to plot. The other one will, other one will always be a false uh, or a mirror image, which might crea create a false signal on the screen. So there is a pre-selector filter that always 
is there in a spectrum analyzer but network analyzer hardware does not have it why do we not have it we do not want additional hardware to be in the path uh, which adds on to more errors okay for network analysis measurement that is not required because we know at what frequency exactly we are measuring but when we are doing a spectrum analysis we don't know at what frequency what to expect so that is when that is what is the difference between normal network analy network analyzer receiver and a spectrum analyzer now that uh, that roadblock is removed okay so a spectrum a full fledged spectrum analyzer for measurements like harmonics and spurious can be used within the network analyzer so say for example if i have an amplifier i can easily see what are the spurious what are the harmonics performance of the network analyzer i can also see what is happening at the reflected reflected signal at the harmonic frequencies also very easily so it is faster for doing sparse search it is faster in harmonic measurements um, if i consider uh, measurements on mixers it adds lot of more, a lot of other values like if i want to see if there is any leakage from the lo port to the if port or lo port to the rf port such measurements are also very simple when we use inbuilt spectrum analyzer feature so basically it is adding to the single connection multiple measurement i need not have a spectrum analyzer signal generator combination to see harmonic performance and spurious performance phase noise measurement i have a source i want to see what is the phase noise performance or i have a amplifier i want to do the uh, residual phase noise measurement no network analyzers are capable of doing that uh, the network analyzer what you see here is uh, n5247a now we have come up with a new range of network analyzer or new version of pnx which we call it as n5247b uh, one big advantage with this is we have upgraded the built in source we have a dds based source sitting inside now what is the advantage of dds based source the source is very 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 clean which means its phase noise is as good as a high performance signal generator so that enables us to use the network analyzer to do phase noise measurements also okay so if i can upgrade this to a b version or if i have a pnx of b version with a phase noise measurement application phase noise measurement also can be done on a network analyzer itself uh finally the amplifier will be used in some kind of transmitters receivers right so when i'm using this in the path i want to understand if i'm feeding a modulated signal what is happening at the output so how do we understand the quality of modulation the figure of merit usually uses something called as error vector magnitude error vector magnitude error vector magnitude tells me how good the modulation is for a digitally modulated signal uh traditionally again a uh, evm is measured only with a combination of a vector signal analyzer and a vector signal generator now again with a combination of a signal generator and the network analyzer receiver we can do error vector magnitude measurement also so we can understand the distortion that is added by the amplifiers so latest uh, amplifier data sheets will start having this also because one of the uh, one of the uh, very fast upgrading technology or fast moving technology is commercial communication now what we see is 5g 5g right so evm is something very very important for those communication signal so someone who wants to use an amplifier for their uh, transmitter or receiver in their 5g transmitter or 5g receivers they want to have very good evm so evm would be a number in the amplifier so evm can be measured i want to understand the spectral regrowth uh, because of the leakage into the adjacent channels the acpr measurement also can be done in a vector network analyzer um, NPR, another way of measuring uh, IMD. So if I keep doing IMD measurement for very wide bandwidth, especially for uh, uh, for satellite application, the bandwidths are wider. Uh, where I can't keep doing uh, IMD measurement, so another way of doing that is called as um, NPR measurement. So uh, multi-tone signal is given with a notch, and we see how much the notch power is increasing because of the distortion from the amplifier. so that is that measurement which is called npr measurements also can be done in a network analyzer now so around network analyzer lot of such applications are there okay and i have listed few of them uh, please do contact kisa technologies whenever you want more information on this um, last topic i want to touch uh, before i end this uh, training module is uh, something called as auto fixture uh, removal this is a feature uh, that your network analyzer also has 
so calibrating uh, using a coaxial standard or calibrating wherever we have a proper cal substrate uh, is possible when we have those standards so every time at every point we cannot have that cal substrate available so there might be inaccessible uh, locations of of the hardware for example if i have if i'm testing a uh, uh, if i'm if i want to test a transmitter which does not have a coaxial uh, coaxial connectors then i need to design a pcb where that transmitter would be mounted and we will be measuring the there would be traces on the pcb where there will be a coaxial connector and we do the measurement how do we, how do we remove the effects of this uh, this uh, trace that is going from the coaxial connector to the bga pads or whatever kind of pads what we have to connect the amplifier so to remove this effect uh, either we develop a cal standard that is how it was usually done a trl standard used to be developed to make it much simpler we have this technique called as auto fixture removal um, what is done here is uh, a easier way uh, either build a 2x through or uh, uh, if i have a, a, a say for example a trace of length x i build a 2x length trace on the same pcb with two coaxial connectors connect the vna ports on these two cables and press few buttons for AFR uh, uh, using AFR feature that fixture uh, characteristics are calculated uh, I mean uh, measured extracted and that can be de-embedded from the final measurement that is what is the capability of AFR AFR started with a 2x through capability okay uh, that you see here this is shown for a differential uh, trace where this is one side of the uh, fixture and this is the other side of the fixture and the two x through is built the vna would be connected here we do the measurement and we extract the fixture uh, characteristics later uh, we have introduced one x or uh, or automatic automatic fixture removal using a open or short uh, when we have a open or a short on the other end also we can extract the characteristics characteristics of this fixture this makes it a little easier uh, where instead of uh, having a 2x through trace uh, built on, uh, we just remove the DOT and just keep the trace open to do this measurement. Of course, each of them have their limitations. You should know what is the kind of trace you are measuring, how good the open or a shot it has. Okay, based on that, we can get, uh, we can extract the characteristics. Uh, such measurements can be done on probes also. Uh, we can extract the probe characteristics also using AFR. So, this is a small thing that I wanted to introduce or talk about uh, before uh, finishing my training part. Uh, AFR is present in this analyzer also. It basically asks you what is the kind of DUT? So, I mean, what is the kind of fixture? Is it differential or is it single ended? Is it one port or two port? Okay. You have to select that and then you have to say is, are you using 2x through as a standard or a open or a short as a standard. You select that, the third step would be actually doing the measurement. It does the measurement and extracts the data and it gives you the data. If you feel there is some alterations you can do on that, that can also be done. Uh, that is a little advanced feature that is available that can be done. Uh, the fourth step would be de-embed from that, de-embed from your final measurement, de-embed the fixture part. Uh, there is a fifth step where you can save that fixture file that you have extracted. Next time you can just directly de-embed it also. You need not do the AFR. That is also a possibility. So that is what is AFR. Again, there are a lot of application notes uh, that is available. If you want to know more about that, again, you can contact us. Like I've been repeating, uh, there are a lot of application notes, okay? Go to keysight.com. Um, just start typing whatever topic you want. Um, most of the times you will end up finding application notes. So what I'm showing here, you here to you is a application note called as understanding the fundamental principle of vector network analysis. So I have sp uh, I have spoken maybe like 10% of that application note in the beginning, but this app note freely available. Just go download. Uh, it talks about the architecture. It talks about calibration. All those measurement. All those things are spoken about in this. So there are a lot of app notes in keysight.com. Uh, you can just go and uh, start using it. Uh, there is a book also uh, from uh, from one of the Keysight uh, fellow uh, who has written this book 
okay he is the expert of a vector network analyzer he has introduced lot of things what i have spoken in the uh, in the in these slides there is a book written by him you can purchase this book if you want to if you are interested or if you are, if you want to know more about a network analyzer okay thank you uh, that is what i had and uh, you can note down my email id uh, you can note down my email id if you have any uh, if you have any questions if you want more details uh, you can write to this email id uh, i will try to help you thank you